Okay, that's enough about boring terminology for now. Now let's have a look at how to size your inverter properly for your setup. What kind of choices need, do you need to make and how do you get to choosing the right size for you? So the first step is to make a big list of all the appliances that you have and that you would like to be powered up by your inverter. Now you want to write down all the relevant information such as the power consumption, etc. But what I often see people doing is that they want to take a bit of a shortcut uh, they'll look at their power distribution board and they say, well, all these light bulbs or all these kitchen appliances, they're being uh, provided with power through a breaker, which is rated 15 amps or something. And then it is right on the, uh, on the total overview that all these appliances together, they use 15 amps. Now, this is not the right approach because the breaker will be rated higher than the total combined power consumption of all the appliances. So instead, what you should do is look at each and every appliance, look at the appliance label, the specification sheet that's there's a sticker on the back of the appliance, or sometimes it's printed or hard coded on the device itself. And look what it says that the maximum power consumption is on the device itself. You should also look up the voltage, so the operating voltage of that device and uh, look for the power rating so it's in watts or in volt amps so try to accumulate all that information put it on a big list and then you're done with the first step so the second step would be to create a worst case scenario of power consumption in your system so i've drawn this second step smaller than all the all the appliances combined because you shouldn't just combine all the appliances together and say well this is what my inverter needs to power up you could do it uh, but you'll probably be substantially oversizing your inverter and you don't always need to do that. Instead, what I would advise you to do is to be a bit more realistic, create a realistic worst case scenario. So for example, uh, you might have a laundry machine and a dryer. Well, some people never ever use the two at the same time and that would drastically reduce your worst case um, scenario and therefore reduce the requirements, the capacity size of your inverter. And a small tip or a side note for you, realize that if you would buy a proper inverter, that the inverter has a automatic protection built into its in the, in the device itself. So what this means is that if you would turn on, I don't know, a few kettles or toaster at the same time, and you would exceed the maximum power rating of the inverter, then the inverter will shut off by itself. So all the power will be cut towards your appliances. And you now have the time to turn off what you just turned on. And most of the smarter type of inverters will actually then retry again after 10, 20, 30 seconds to see like, hey, did you already turn off that appliance and can it now provide the right amount of power? So this kind of feature is also quite neat to have. Now, when you're done with the second step, you could consider the next optional step, which is to actually measure what your appliances are consuming. The reason why I'm mentioning this is that not always the max rating that you'll find on the label on the device itself might actually be the amount of power that you're using. Sometimes the max rating of the appliance is several times higher than what on average the appliance is using for your setup. So let me give you an example. If you would have a fridge or a freezer that has a an ice maker, but you would never use the ice maker, then the average consumption of that unit will be significantly less than the max rating that's written on the, the back of the unit. Or if you'd have a freezer with an auto defrost function, you know, they can consume quite a bit of power. If you wouldn't use the auto defrost, then again, the actual rating on the device itself is more than what you would use. Now, it's pretty easy to measure what the actual power consumption is of your appliance. You would have to buy a, an energy monitor, which is a small device that you would plug into your wall outlet, your power outlet, and then into this energy monitor, you would take the plug from your device, from your fridge or whatever, you plug it in there, and you let it run for a day or a few days, and then it will monitor the maximum, minimum, average values, everything. And then after a couple of days, you just read it out and you'll actually know what the maximum power consumption is of this specific uh, appliance. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of off-grid energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. The second option you have is a bit less convenient, but it would also work if you'd have a 
a digital multimeter which has a clamp on function so that you could clamp on a wire or a cable then if you know what you're doing you could actually measure the the instant power consumption of a certain appliance so this would also work but uh, i find that the other option with the energy monitor is much more easy okay so this option the measurement is optional but i highly recommend it uh, it can really pay off on, on the long term so now the uh, last choice that you need to make is whether or not you want to go for the generator assist function so we discussed this before and i think by now you understand this right if you go for an inverted charger in combination with a generator and if the inverted charger would be the smart type of inverted charger with the generator assist function then you could combine the maximum power output rating of the generator together with the maximum output of the inverter and together they will be able to bundle their power output and this would be your uh, realistic worst case scenario of the total amount of power that you could draw out of your system so just remember that Choosing to go for a generator assist function and inverter charges means that you have the benefit of choosing for a smaller uh, generator size. So uh, this can in certain situations be substantial benefit. Okay, so a thumbs up for you for sitting through all of this. You're becoming a lot smarter in all these topics now. So you understand what the logic steps are that you need to take in order to make a proper conclusion about which kind of inverter and inverter size is right for you. You understand the terminology used uh, in the uh, topics of inverters and you understand the other three topics so the the basics of inverters what happens inside we looked at a different kind of uh, sine waves that are out there and we looked at a different kind of inverter type so uh, well done this is everything you need to know for now about inverters